Hey everybody, it's Doug with Doug Johnson Productions, and I want to do a video today talking about a couple different video uh, for format converters. Uh, I've got the Decimator MDHX here, and I've also got the Blackmagic Design Terranex Express. So, talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each, and actually show you some sample video that's being converted. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the pricing on these things. The Decimator MDHX is uh, t normally 295 US dollars. Um, pretty consistent, pretty consistent across the different vendors that are out there. So, uh, no matter where you go, you're going to be paying about 295. There is a slightly fancier model that they make. It's called the MD Cross. It's it's a hundred dollars more. So that's 395. And the one thing that it adds that this does not have is test patterns. So things like color bars and and bunch of other different sample test patterns that you can you can output on the device. Whereas this one just does video conversion and nothing more. On the Black Magic side, the Terranex Express is uh, 1395 US dollars. Uh, pretty consistent pricing on that one as well. Uh, so the question is, is the Terranex worth the extra money or would you rather get the much cheaper unit uh, and save some money that way? Uh, one way to look at this is you can actually get a little over three of these for the price of one of these. So you have to decide whether, it's more, whether uh, you want the extra features capabilities of the Terranex or whether the MDHX is actually good enough. So quick, let's take a little bit of a tour here of the MDHX uh, cross converter. So you can, see, you can see here it's got an LCD screen on it and it allows you to navigate menus and configure the device. You can do all the configuration of the device from the menus. You don't necessarily need to use any software and there's no dip switches or anything like that to worry about. Everything is done through the menu. The screen is, is actually backlit, and you, if you can read that, it's actually showing that on the SDI input, um, outputting an, or inputting an S, SD standard F480i 5994, HDMI input is not connected, and the D, which is a, a down and up converter within the unit, uh, is outputting a 3G 1080p 5994 video signal. Uh, this video that I'm shooting right now is actually uh, 1080p 5994. So uh, what I'm doing is converting a standard def signal so that we can actually take a look at that in a minute. On the right side, there are a total of five SDI jacks, one input, two jacks for output one, two jacks for output two. Now there's a couple different things you can do with this. Uh, output one can either be a loop through of the input or it can be a copy of um, whatever's on the HDMI, or it can be the down converter. The device supports conversion two different directions. So it goes HDMI to SDI, SDI to HDMI, and you can do both at the same time. And it also has a unique ability to output two different signals on some of the SDI ports. Uh, because it's fully configurable of where your inputs get sent as far as outputs, this can actually be used as a one to four distribution amplifier as well. So at the same time converting an HDMI input to a different video format. So it's, the device is actually very flexible. And if we go back to the device and look at the left side, we have HDMI input, HDMI output, a USB port for doing uh, configuration over, over a USB connection from a computer, and then a locking power jack. And the power on this is a 5.5 millimeter by 2.5 millimeter DC barrel. Um, I've been able to power this device with, with other power supplies other than the one that comes with it. Uh, I've even done power over Ethernet for remotely powering this thing uh, in situations where AC power is not available where I need to run it. For the most part, I really like this unit. I've, I've, I've got three of them now and plan to purchase additional, one, additional ones in the future. Before I move on to anything else, let me ta let's take a quick look at the uh, USB interface software running on a computer. Uh, in this case, I have two devices that are connected on, through the through USB, so MD1 and MD2. You can select either one of those things. So multiple can be plugged in at one time, which is pretty nice. In the first screen here, you've got the status, which basically indicates which device you're connected to, what firmware version it has. This software actually is used for firmware upgrades as well. It tells you what uh, signal is coming in on SDI and what type of signal is going out or coming in on on HDMI. Uh, so in this case, I've got this is this is the converter that I'm using for my computer here. 
uh, you can see it's 3G level A coming in on the input and uh, there's a, a signal coming in on SDI as well. So if we come to the control tab, this is actually where we assign uh, the outputs for the or the inputs for the different outputs. So for for example, in this case, the SDI output source here is this built-in scaler, and the HDMI output source is also the built-in scaler. So right now, it's outputting the same video signal on both the SDI and HDMI outputs. In terms of the HDMI, it allows you to se select several different types of video and audio formats here. So in this case, I'm uh, even though I'm not I don't have anything plugged into HDMI at the moment, I can choose that I want to output either a RGB or YCBCR formats and then choose whether it's 444 or 422 and then how many channels of audio are passed in, in the signal. Below that we have the source for the scaler. So we can either have the, the scaler video come from HDMI or for SDI. In this case my computer is connected via HDMI and so I've got the HDMI input selected or HDMI source selected for the scaler. And then you can also set the, the reference on that. So if you're in an environment that uses uh, reference signals, you can you can do that. It also has the option of setting the background color uh, when there's no signal on the input. So in this case, I've got each one of my MDHXs set to a different color. So if I'm viewing the output of one of them, I can tell by co color which one it is. And then below that, we can choose whether S the 3G SDI is level A or level B. The last option on the screen is whether output 1 on the SDI is a loop through, so it mirrors the SDI input, or whether it is uh, the same as output 2. I'm checking that option. We'll take care of that. So on the scaling, this is actually where we can set the, the video format that's used uh, as output for the scaler. So right now I'm outputting 3 gig 1920 by 1080 at 5994, which is the video format that I'm using on my switcher at the moment. So by running the signal through this device, no matter what the input signal is, I can guarantee that I'm always outputting a 3G signal. Below that, we can choose uh, the aspect ratio conversion that's done when we have S uh, uh, standard def input and convert to standard def. And then we have one for standard def to 3, 3 gig or HD. And then below that, 3 gig or HD to SD, and then 3 gig or H HD to 3 gig or HD. So we can have four different settings for the aspect ratio conversion. Another thing it's got here is it has the ability to, to take a 1080i input signal that's actually a PSF, progressive segmented frame, and then recognize it as such. And so when it sees that, it knows that, hey, we're actually looking at a progressive signal even though it's coming in as interlaced, and then do the appropriate uh, conversions based on that, assembling a complete progressive frame from the individual interlaced fields. Horizontal filtering level allows us to do a little bit of filtering on the on the uh, video, uh, sharpening, uh, noise reduction, that kind of thing. Um, they don't really specify exactly what that is, so any, it's kind of anybody's guess. And then we also have horizontal and vertical f flipping options, so if you needed to reverse the video on a projector or a monitor, say for example a projector is behind the screen instead of in front of it, you could reverse and you can do a horizontal flip on the video on the output. Uh, the audio is where you uh, basically reassign the audio outputs to come from different sources. So, for example, if I wanted to uh, take audio channels 1 and 2 and output them to 3 and 4, I could choose group 1, pair 1 uh, for that particular output. And the same thing can be done for HDMI down at the bottom. And then the last page the setup is where we set the LCD power or backlight time off time. Right now I've got it set for one minute, so one minute after I press the last button, the light will shut off. And then an option for how long it returns to the main status screen after, la after activity. And the la last option here is auto save settings. So basically as you make changes, those settings are saved in non-volatile memory. So the next time you power it up, it returns to those settings. If that's unchecked, then the device returns to its default settings, whatever you set those to be every time it's powered on. So. That's basically what's in the user interface for the Decimator USB control panel application. This device is just about conversion. It doesn't really do anything else. So if you need a device that does other things such as legalizing your video or uh, modifying the coloring of an image or transcoding timecode, that's where your Terranex series of device comes into play. 
Aside from that, the Terranex uh, converter is probably just a little bit higher quality uh, at the expense of additional delay in the signal. So one thing that I've done here is I've got a standard def video playing off the hyperdeck here. And what you're seeing on the left monitor is the output directly from the Terran uh, from the the hyperdeck. I mean uh, actually there we go. So this is the output directly from the hyperdeck and this monitor here is the output of of the MDHX. So th what this test is doing is allowing us to see how much delay there is in the signal. And, it, and as we switch shots from this concert that I shot last week, you can see that there's almost no delay. It's I think it's about one frame, maybe less than a frame of delay on the on the conversion in this device. And this is converting standard def up to high def. So fair amount of processing going on there, but the device seems to have no trouble with it. As, yeah, as, as we switch shots, you can see that there may be a little bit of a tiny delay, but it's very minimal. Very, very minimal. Almost, almost imperceptible, unless you're looking for it. Which means that the device can actually be used in live video production. Uh, so if you have a, con a camera that's not uh, the same standard, video standard, video format that you're, sw you're using on your switcher, uh, you can actually run your video signal through one of these units and convert it to the right signal without any perceptible delay. You could actually cut between the converted camera and other cameras without anybody realizing that there's any sort of processing going on there, aside from the inherent softness that comes from doing any sort of video conversion. In this case, we're converting standard def to high def, so there's going to be a lot of softening because the original video source uh, is not very high resolution. but uh, yeah, this device actually does a fairly good job of conversion. Now, with, th with that said, I'm going to rewire my jack here, my panel, just a little bit and switch the second LCD to the output of the Terranex. The Terranex is currently converting the same video source, so the same HyperDeck video on loop. And one thing that you'll immediately notice is that there's quite a bit more delay on the Terranex than there is in the decimator uh, unit. So it's a, actually a perceptible delay. It's such that it's long enough that I have elected not to ever use the Terranex in a live situation, particularly if it's we're in a situation where the video that's being switched is being shown on a projector in, in the same room as the video is being shot, because it would be very, very easy for someone to spot that there was a processing delay going on there. Uh, as far as uh, capabilities of the Terran X, uh, it does not only conversion between formats, it'll do basically any format to any other format um, within the range th that it supports. The Terran X Express actually supports Ultra HD, so it goes all the way from standard F up to Ultra HD at up to 30 frames per second, so it's a 6, six gig device. Is that correct? I should probably look that up. I can't remember if it's six, 6 or 12. I only use it for 6, so... Um, it might be 12, I'll have to research that. Uh, but it does conversions from any format to any other format. And it can be between uh, frame rates, resolutions, etc. So if you've got a 50 hertz PAL standard def signal that you need to up-convert to ultra-high def, the device will do it. Um, the decimator, on the other hand, it will convert between f a PAL signal to, to standard def, but the, the unit only does high def, standard def and high def. It does not have any sort of ultra high def processing capabilities. All right. That said, uh, some of the other things that the Terran X is, is capable of doing is it converts uh, between, um, say, if you have dual link SDI and you want to convert that to a single link signal or vice versa, it, it does both of that, both of those. Um, it'll even do, it'll even drive a quad split display. So if you have four monitors and you want to feed them an uh, ultra high def signal that's split between the four for a two by two view, it will do that, um, and among a number of other things. There's also a video processing app in there as well where you can modify the gain, saturation, black level, uh, other different aspects of the video signal as well. In fact, as I'm doing this, let me actually switch to my computer here. So I'll show you the, show you the interface. This is the the US, this, this is not, sorry, it's not USB. It's actually the, uh, the, the interface you get when you connect over Ethernet. So you can see here that my input source 
525i, 59.94. I'm not sure why some people call it 525 and others call it 480. They're both the same thing. Um, but it allows you to select audio. You can you can embed audio from other jacks. Uh, you select you can select your out video output format here. There we go. Yeah, this does support ultra high def at 60 frames. So I answered my own question there. Uh, you choose where. Or choose the types of inputs that are being there or th that are uh, are being used. So whether it's single ink, dual ink, or even a quad HD split as the input, and then the output you can choose uh, with 3G uh, level A or B. And there's another option elsewhere to choose whether you want to do the quad split or not. You can also do an external reference signal. So if you've got tri level sync or gen lock going on, the output can be synced to that. In terms of processing. Here's your proc amp settings, so gain, saturation, black level, hue, sharpness, red minus y, blue minus y. Uh, do some minor color correction by adjusting the individual th color channels. And do clipping of the video signal in order to make sure that it's legal for broadcast. As, we, as I've talked about in some of my other videos, you can't have blacks that dip below zero, and you can't have whites that are any value that goes above 100 uh, IRE. So this will allow you to actually do that, do that clipping for you. Uh, in terms of the video conversion, one of the really nifty things that this does is it allows you to take uh, a source that's already that's had 3.2 pull down applied to it and reverse that, and actually get a native. Um, say for example, you're t you've got a, a video that's it was originally shot on film and then converted. It was uh, Telesin, Telesine uh, done to convert it for for DVD or whatever, you can reverse that 3.2 pull, pull down through the Terranex Express and it will find find the original video frames and then allow you to output a true 24 or 23976 signal on the output. So pretty cool feature there for anybody who needs it. Um, the software here has a feature to allow you to select if it's going to de detect scenes and if so it will try and make sure that the cadence of that 3-2 pull down is handled properly. Uh, source type, you can also specify whether it's video or film. That helps it to know uh, where the individual frames uh, embedded in a interlay signal will be coming from. All right, so we have uh, controls for aspect ratio. So not only does this support converting like 4-3 or 4-3 to 16 by 9, but and vice versa. But it can also do arbitrary aspects as, as well. So you can even do something as, as strange as taking a 4 by 3 signal that's embedded in 16 by 9 and stretching it out. It'll, it'll let you do all those kinds of things. Yeah, it's freely up to you uh, in order to determine how how the cropping and stretching is done on that. And then you can specify when you're doing if you're doing any sort of cropping, you can specify the color that's filled in in the background. Uh, in terms of ancillary data, we've got uh, time code. Uh, dr and then if we, we're dealing with time code, we need, need to know whether it's drop frame or non-drop frame. Um, so pretty cool time code pr processing going on there. I won't go into too much detail on that. It's something not, not a lot of us deal with. Uh, audio, you can do adjust the gain and delay. And it also allows uh, reassigning channels on on the audio output. The decimator actually does the same thing. So if I wanted to take channel one and, and make a copy of that on channel three, it'll let you do that without any difficulty whatsoever. And then the last page is used with the USB instead of e uh, Ethernet in order to set the IP address of the unit. Uh, you, can, you can save your presets uh, for later recall. So if you're dealing with uh, different settings for different venues that you happen to work in, you can save your settings and recall them uh, at a later time. Or if you, have, if you have conversions that you do frequently, you can save those. So, and with all of that said, let's actually take a look at the quality of the conversion. So what I'm going to do here, switch to this shot. So the top of this frame is the decimator, uh, MDHX doing the conversion, and then the bottom of the frame is the Terran X Express doing the conversion. And again, this is a standard def video, originally shot high def, but I down converted it to standard def in Adobe Premiere. Uh, it's not just standard def, but it's also interlaced. And so what we're doing is we're taking a standard def interlaced signal and up converting it to a high def 1080p 60 frame 
5994 signal. Now, the first thing that's immediately obvious is that the de the Terranex definitely is delayed more. Uh, every time we change shots or when there's motion, you can see that there's uh, definitely a delay on the bottom half of the screen where the Ter with the Terranex display. So. Uh, the other thing that becomes apparent is that the quality of the conversion in the Terranex actually is a little bit better. A little sharper, it's a little cleaner. Uh, and with noise reduction, uh, you can actually get rid of some of the, some of the, the video noise that would, you would normally be dealing with. Uh, but that said, the conversion on the MDHX is actually pretty darn good, you know, especially for a, a device that costs less than a third um, of the Terranex. So, in my particular scenario, what I decided to do is to invest mostly in the, in the MDHX devices and then have one Terranex Express around if I need to do conversion to or from ultra high def or if I need to, if, if I was to get a, a gig where we was to do, where to do broadcast television, I can run the signal through the Terranex to make sure that it's clean and broadcast ready. Because uh, normally the video coming out of my switcher rack is not fully compliant because the whites can be a little hot and then the blacks can be a, can be too dark. So running it through the Terranex allows me to clean that up. So one thing about the Terranex conversion that the, the decimator does not do is the Terranex will actually use the data from multiple adjacent frames of video. Uh, and it does something called sub-pixel rendering. So it's able to look for detail in adjacent frames in order to construct a higher detail picture. Uh, in the, on the output. So, you know, if you're dealing with a standard def signal and you're up converting to high def, uh, you could actually get significantly more de more detail in the final image than you would otherwise. So, if you're looking for the highest quality conversion, the bottom line is the Terranex is probably the way to go. And truth be told, the Terranex has really become the industry standard in terms of video standard conversion. So, if you walk into nearly anybody, nearly any television studio in the world real television studio in the world, you're going to find some Terranex devices there. So there are others on the, on the market as well, but the Terranex has actually proven themselves to be, to be very good. Uh, it, even though it is a Blackmagic product, product and most Blackmagic products have some sort of issues, these are actually pretty close to perfect. And I think a lot of that comes from the fact that they, Blackmagic acquired Terranex. They didn't develop the technology in-house. And so they started with a very high-quality product, and they've just improved on it over, t over the years. And they're also not having to cut, cut corners on the budget like they do on a lot of the other, other products in order to meet a certain price point. The Terranex are priced where they're priced. And so uh, if, if somebody wants it, they can buy it. And if they, don't, if they can't afford it, they can go buy something else or do without. And Blackmagic doesn't make any apologi apologies for their pricing on that. And I think that's probably the right approach on this, on this device. It's not that super expensive. Like I said, the, the Express version here is 1400 so it's not too bad. Um, get, it would get expensive if you had to buy a lot of them, but it's doing a lot of really cool things. And so, you know, bang for the buck, it probably actually is there, even though the Decimator devices are quite a bit cheaper. So, well, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, though, uh, ultimately what I decided to do is to have several of these, currently at three, I probably will, will be getting more, and then at least one Terranex Express in order to do the high quality conversion when necessary. So the conversion on the MDHX is good enough for pretty much everything that I do. There are very few situations where I actually need something higher quality. In a lot of situations I'm, I'm, where I'm shooting, I need to have minimal delay on the video signal. So it's very common for when I'm for th for the types of events that I'm doing for the video signal to be projected up on up on a screen. And in that case, the l is having as little delay as possible is extremely important. And and the decimators do allow me to do that. M the other nice thing about them is since they're so small, I can stick multiple multiple in one equipment rack and not be taking up a lot of room or uh, add, add a lot of extra weight. So. Bottom line is you choose the product that's, that you like best. I will be doing a full, more full review of each of these devices in the future. So stay tuned uh, to my channel, subscribe, and uh, come back and check, check often. I uh, will be doing lots of these video production uh, mini reviews and thoughts and overview videos in days and weeks to come. So anyway, thanks for, ha for watching and have a great day.